remember two weeks ago. We started talking about Jesus, what? Jesus is it. Yep. And we mentioned several passages. But the one that started it all off was the one found in, G in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Remember, Moses was concerned. He didn't know what to do. He was putting all kinds of excuses, and then he said, God, who do I tell the people you are? And then God said, what? Tell the people of Israel, I am, what? Who I am. Tell them, I am has sent you. But then we started looking into verses like 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have come new. And we saw there was a gap. There was a gap between the promise of being a new creation, what God expecting us to be, what I know I ought to be, and the reality of who I am. And remember we talked about how people look at this gap. And we mentioned some people looking at the gap, they try harder to be better Christians. Does it work? Not really. Not really. So some of the people look at the gap and they decide that they will handle it by pretending. And I mentioned two weeks ago, they decide to fake it till they make it. Can they really make it? Nope. But then some of the people, especially those that, remember I mentioned going, going to youth camps every summer, last night of camp meeting. Some people figure what I need to do is just rededicate myself and up my commitment level. They get involved, they do things. Not only that, they become the superheroes in their churches. But it doesn't last for too long. So finally, some people just decide to give up. Not because they stop coming to church. Not because they don't want to be Christians no more. Not because they don't want to do nothing for the Lord, but they just give up because they come week after week. And as they come, they leave. So... What if Jesus really is present at all time? What if through his spirit, Jesus not only came to die on the cross so that all of our sins can be forgiven and we can be with God in heaven, but he is really available today, right now? What if life with God, I'm talking about God's presence, I'm talking about God's power, is really available for you today? In a sense, listen to this. My task is no longer 
to change things around me. I do not have to try harder. I do not have to keep trying harder. That's not what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. What I'm really supposed to do is to find out how to stay connected with God from one moment to the next to the next. Because Jesus is it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know who you are, but we're also aware of who we are, and we see a huge gap. Help us understand how to be filled with the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you look in the book of John, chapter 14, you'll find that Jesus says, I am the way. You've read that before, right? Many times. I am the way. Now, what Jesus is saying here is that there is a way of life in following him. There is a way of life in following him. The most helpful idea I've learned in following Jesus is the difference between trying to do something and training to do something. Heard me right? Difference between what? Trying to do something and training to do something. Let me read from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Well, why don't you read it for me? Who wants to go ahead and read it? Everybody. I always have people ready to do that. I know. Who wants to go ahead and read? Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Absolutely, Gigi. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. And be not fashioned according to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, and ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful passage. What a beautiful passage. I urge you So actually, Paul is appealing to your will, to our will, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies. Offer my body? What does it mean? What is he really talking about here? To present my body as a living sacrifice? Huh. Strange. Now, part of that process involves my thoughts and feelings. In other words, it involves running now on a different track, becoming a different type of Christian. But then, what really Paul is talking about here is a transformational process. What Paul's talking about here is a transformation that comes inside out. Because I'll respond differently. I'll be living differently. I will understand the kingdom of God in a different point of view. From a different point of view, I mean. Let me give you an example. And this is really a picture of discipleship. Have any of you ever been a, on a ropes course? Anybody? Ropes course? One, two, three. Okay, several one of you. Okay, uh, Tony, can we have the images here? Let me show you what a ropes course is all about, if you had not seen it before. Uh-huh. How do you like that? 
That's nice, isn't it? Great adventure. Having fun. Hey, being up in the air. That's funny. No way. <laughs> I heard it. I'm with you. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Listen. Ropes cords. It's, it's about 30, 40, or 50 feet up in the air. I've never been in one. I'm not that type of a person. But I've read enough about this, preparing for my sermon, and I've seen people doing that. But let me tell you what the instructors tell you. Okay? And this is from the manual. They will tell you, you will enjoy the ropes course. Sure. They even tell you, you can enjoy it and keep doing it for the rest of your lives. Uh-huh. Now, let me tell you this. Some kids, I'm talking about the youth they could go on the ropes, and they have just a wonderful time. They don't care. It's having fun. No problem whatsoever. But, but for most people, people who's never had an experience on ropes course before, <laughs> once you go up there, you experience one emotion, a real vivid and strong emotion. Can you, get, can you guess what it is? Fear. Thank you. Fear. Now, the instructors will tell you something like this. It's possible for you to live life on the ropes without fear. What do you have to do? You know what you have to do? And they won't tell you this exactly the way I'm saying it, but in, a different, in different words, they will tell you the same that I'm going to say. This is what they would say. You have to offer your body as a living sacrifice. You got that? What do you have to do? You have to what? Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Huh. It works like this. First, you got some teaching. Yeah, you got some teaching. The teaching is fundamental. It's very important. They would teach you about the ropes, about the carbineer. They would teach you about how to strap into the harness and tell you what, what you have to do in order to be safe. They would even tell you, as long as you're strapped in, you're safe. Now, if you're the one taking the course, and this is the very first time you're going to go up in that rope, Do you really believe what the instructors tell you? Do you? Well, I would say part of you would. Your mind would. Your mind would believe them. Because you know enough physics to believe that it's, it is true. But after the teaching, it always comes what? The practice the practice. Now, when you get up on those ropes, you found part of your body that did not believe what the instructor said. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to um, Anthony. Anthony, where are you, man? He was helping us out here. He's always ready to, to help and to serve. Good deacon. But Anthony was sharing with me in the morning that he went through this course, the ropes course, 
One day, one of the girls was starting. All of a sudden, she got panicked. And she couldn't go on. So what did he have to do? He had to go all the way up there, help her all the way to the finish because she just could not move. She was paralyzed. Now, part of your mind says, yeah, I could do that. I have not a problem. I believe what you say. But once you go up there, once you're up 50 feet up, your body, <laughs> your palms, your sweat glands, you start sweating you, and your body says, no, I don't believe this. And when you start shaking like an earthquake, at that point, you know for sure you did not believe what the instructors say. Now, there is, there is a profound truth here. Very profound truth. Remember, remember the text we read at the beginning. Gigi read from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And this is the spiritual truth that I want you to believe in. Spiritual development. Spiritual development is coming to believe with our whole body and mind that Jesus is true. Spiritual development is coming what? To believe with our whole minds and bodies. To believe that Jesus is true. What do we say? Well, it's as simple as this. As simple as this. Jesus said that God has counted the hairs of your head. Jesus said that he died for you. Jesus said that even death cannot separate you from his love. Now, what Jesus is trying to say is this. From an eternal, from an ultimate, from the most practical perspective, where you are right now is the perfect place for you to be. Do you believe that? Even though awful things can happen to your body, the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Do you believe it? Well, I would say part of me does, because that's my creed. That's what I believe. My mind believes that. My mind accepts that. But do I really live in accordance to my belief? See what I mean? Do you see the gap? Do you see the gap? Do you see that there is big expectations, but there is another reality? So the ropes instructor tell you that life of joy and freedom on the ropes is possible. Sure. But then they tell you, you have to offer your body as a living sacrifice. Question, how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, I'm going to give you a sample, I mean a simple answer. The best way to give your body as a, as a living sacrifice is to go up to the ropes. And if you go up to the ropes often enough, you will come to believe with your whole body that this is a safe place to be. Now, listen to what I'm saying here. I'm not talking about teaching alone. I'm talking about a combination. After you've learned, you practice. And the more you practice, what is it? Oh. Let's go to the spiritual realm. 
Information alone is not enough to transform your life. Got that? Say it from the back. All right. I didn't understand it, but yep, you're right. Information alone is not enough to transform your life. Are you with me? That's the way it is. The will is transformed only by experience and information. It's because we have a big misconception about spiritual growth. And it happens in many churches. Could happen in, in Miami Temple as well. I don't know. But the misconception that we have is that if we want to have more mature and committed people in the church, we got to keep giving and cramming more and more information into people. And the more information we give them, the better Christians they will be. And I say, no way, Jose. That's not the way it works. And it's never worked, and it will never work like that. The information process alone does not do anything. So one of the ways that I sometimes illustrate this is, have you ever known... Listen to this, because many of us, you probably have. But have you ever known someone? Don't look at anyone here right now. But have you ever known someone in church who happens to know 10 times more about the Bible than the average person? But he or she was not 10 times more joyful than the average person. Have you? It happens all the time, doesn't it? Information alone is not adequate. Information alone does not go to any transformation of a human being. Like the ropes course, if you keep going up on the ropes often enough, eventually you will be changed. But you do not have to know a lot. You do not have to know more than the other ones. You do not have to believe that you're better than anybody else. As a matter of fact, let me tell you this. You can be a bad disciple. What did I say? <laughs> Boy, I think I, I think I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm going to say it again. At least I'm going to say it right. You can even be a bad disciple. Same thing, right? Okay. This is for all of us. Because if you thought that you were the perfect example, if you thought that you're a perfect disciple, if you thought that you're the top of the line, careful, think again. Think again. It doesn't really matter if you're a good or a bad disciple as long as you keep being a disciple of Jesus. What do we say? Oh, yeah. Remember, we are in the transformational process. No one has reached it yet. So what do, you, what do you have to do? You have to keep offering your body as a living sacrifice. You have to keep letting go, working your life. Jesus says, now the kingdom's come. Now here it is. Now Jesus says, I am who I am. What is it? Jesus saying, follow me. Jesus saying, hey, you got to be my disciple. But you got to be the disciple that I want you to be, not the one you thought you were going to be. See how it works? What's Jesus telling us? Be with me. Arrange your life and practices around me. What's Jesus telling you? 
You don't have to be good at it. You just have to be a disciple. But Jesus is telling you also one more thing. Remember the text in, in Romans chapter 12? Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So Jesus is telling you to do something else here. Jesus is saying, there are certain things your body has to do. Ooh, legalism. Well, we'll see. These are the things that your body has to do. Sometimes your body needs to be in solitude. Sometimes the words of Scripture need to be going before its eyes. Sometimes it needs to give, to give away some staff that it has. Sometimes your body needs to kneel in service. Some moments your body has to gather with other people and share the goodness of Christ. Sometimes that tongue needs to confess sin. And sometimes that same tongue has to praise God with a loud voice. That's what your body needs to do. That's what you need to understand. That's what you need to do. Because there are certain things that the body needs to do. And we do these things not to be better than no one else. But to demonstrate how spiritual I am. But because I love Jesus with all my heart. You know, it's part of a way to follow Jesus. Part of a kingdom of God. Becoming really me. That's what it is all about. When you do that, when you give your life, your body, as a living sacrifice, when you do it often enough, when you do it wisely, when you do it because God's leading you all the way, believe me, without you noticing, you will have a different kind of thoughts. Because that's what life's all about. Life to be filled with an expressible joy. That's life. To have a prayer life in which you develop more intimacy with God. To have a spirit-filled life and an experience that no one else has had before because this is your own experience. The great adventure of being led by the Holy Spirit. To have the incarnational life in which you know what God really meant when He said, I've come down. Because you can find God in your job. You can find Him in, in, in your house. You can find Him talking to some of the people. But most of all, you can find God in your heart. Giving your bodies as a living sacrifice. Jesus is it. I pray. I pray that today, tomorrow, next week, and the month ahead of us, We'll be just about entering into Jesus' kind of way. Because once we enter into Jesus' kind of way, we can start living Jesus' kind of life. Yeah, there is a gap. There is a gap between what I know who I need to be and who I really am. But as you give your life as an instrument to the Holy Spirit and as you do it as often as possible, you will notice that life in Jesus is no longer a dream but is a reality because He is dwelling in you.
stand with me as we sing our closing hymn number 318, Whiter Than Snow, hymn number 318. Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the skies and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself Whatever I know, now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow, whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow, now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow, Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing, I see thy blood flow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, thou seest I patiently wait. Come now and within me a new heart create. To those who have sought thee, thou never saidst no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. There is a good tradition that we have in our church and is the fact that when we have a baptism, at the end of the service, we ask that new member of the church to come up to the platform and uh, we ask all the elders of the church uh, to come along with us and to pray for him. And I'm going to ask Renan to please come forward. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm going to ask all the elders who are present Please come with us as well. think about your family. Are you going to be able to feed him? Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm just amazed. So happy with you. God has blessed us abundantly. And, um, you know, I was talking to Rene just a little while ago, and, uh, and I said, Rene, one of the best ways to become a member of a church is to have a missionary mind. 
and he says, Pastor, I know a lot of people, and he's ready and fired to share the love of God to others. So I'm going to ask uh, Dan Brown to pray for Rene. If you can kneel down right here in the middle, the center, and we all uh, will circle you. Yes. Father in heaven, we are on our knees presenting a new soul to you. We know there is joy in heaven over this. There is joy in Miami Temple as well. Few things in this life have more meaning than giving ourselves to you. Lord, we, we lift up Rene before you. Father, the road before him is not easy. There are struggles ahead. Satan puts boulders in our path, not pebbles, but he puts boulders in our path. Father, we know with, all, with you all things are possible and that you will give us the strength to go around those boulders, under those boulders, over those boulders. It does not matter because the goal is before us. And that is to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. Father, we, we pray for Rene, for the, that this church would adopt him as their son. We are a family here. It is a privilege to be a part of this family. Father, we pray that you will continue to lead Rene, that he might be a witness to those around him, that they will see the change that you have transformed his life. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to have a stranger, Roger, to give uh, Rene the baptismal certificate. Roger has been working with him, and uh, Rene, welcome to the family of God here in Miami Temple Center of the Church. <laughs> 